Greetings and welcome to another edition of The Pedal Shift Project. The Pedal Shift Project is a series of conversations, thoughts, and experiments around the bike touring lifestyle. From tips and tricks to ideas on how to ride your ride, let's shrink the world by bike. Show notes and more are available at pedalshift.net slash 304, and you can email the show at pedalshift at pedalshift.net. Dot net or text me at 202-930-1109 and check Pedal Shift out on all the socials as well. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 304th edition of the Pedal Shift Project. My name is Tim Mooney. Thanks so much for joining. On this edition, we are doing the second part of our special holiday two-parter for the fifth day of the Empire State Trail Ride. A big happy Thanksgiving to all of you who are celebrating here in the States and maybe even around the world. Uh, Canada, you already had yours, so this doesn't count. This is like a late Thanksgiving gift for you, but happy Thanksgiving nonetheless. Um, I will be uh, cooking and watching football today and enjoying the heck out of everything. I hope you're enjoying the day as whatever is your Thanksgiving celebration of choice. Uh, Together, we are going to be doing the final part of the fifth day of this ride. And this was a weird day. Um, It ended uh, in a weird way, just because, well, it was this ride, and I invite you to enjoy all of that. Uh, programming note, we have a fantastic Best of next week featuring a chat with Frank Moritz on his original Eastern Express route that he built about five years ago. And this is now a full-fledged Adventure Cycling Association official route. It's called the Eastern Express Connector. A week or so ago, they gave him a shout out on their Twitter feed, and I thought it was a good time to revisit our conversation. So it is going to be next week's Best of. I hope you enjoy it. He's really left a mark on uh, cycle touring in the United States, and I think it's really fun that we've got that conversation. Also, I'm looking for something new this year for some audience participation in this year's Pedal Shift End of the Year Holiday Spectacular Awards program. This year, we have a listener's choice for best episode. So what I need you to do is just simply email me or text me your favorite episode from episode number 269, which was the first one in January, all the way to episode 306, which you haven't even heard yet. So don't choose that. Or you could, I don't know if it's your favorite and you haven't even heard it. Let's make that happen. Uh, You can uh, email it to me at pedalshift at pedalshift.net or Text the very minimally used uh, text man uh, or, <laughs> uh, hotline 202-930-1109. Uh, do that because uh, there is a listener's choice award for best episode of 2022 coming in the last episode of the season. The, my favorite one to produce because it takes me so much time, but it's enjoyable as heck. So uh, listener's choice award, your favorite episode from 269 to 306. And oh, deadline very important. You need to get that to me by midnight Eastern time, December 25th. So that's Christmas Eve. Make sure you get it to me by then. Uh, Pedalshift at pedalshift.net or text me at 202-930-1109. None of you ever text me. That's okay. It's all right. One other thing. (laughs) The wet phone situation from day four created audio problems basically for the remainder of this tour. Not like impenetrable podcast ruining audio, but from time to time, things get a little weirdly muffled uh, for some of the segments. It's all still pretty listenable, but if it sounds like I'm talking inside a wet paper bag, sometimes it's not just you. All right, let's wrap up day five. From Utica, New York, I am refreshed after a lengthier than normal lunch break. I I feel like I was rewarded for a lengthier lunch break last time, yesterday. Uh, So I'm going to do that again, or have done that again. But the most important thing that I decided, and it was actually kind of a last second thing, and that was to change into some drier clothes. That was a game changer because Boy, I, I felt really uh, uh, not good, not great. Um, the prospect of 37 more miles was not making me feel all that hot. But now that I am no longer wearing full-on wet clothes, with the exception of my socks and shoes, uh, I'm doing all right. I'm doing better. 
uh, I feel good. So a little caffeinated beverage, a little uh, lunch in me. I even picked up dinner uh, just in case. I, my me if memory serves, it's a pizza place in Fort Plain and there wasn't a ton else. Now, of course, this is, was years ago, but it, it, it struck me as the kind of town that uh, could end up having nothing uh, if COVID impacted it the way it impacted so many other towns. So, as a result, I hedged my bet, got myself a, a sandwich from Subway. Not my first choice usually, but they, uh, they keep well in a pannier. And uh, that's what I was going for these, for this. So I should be plenty well fed for tomorrow. Going by the historic marina right now in Utica. Utica, big manufacturing town back in the day. Uh, still a, a really decent sized city. See a nice little spillway into the canal here. The working barge canal. Um, so the bar, the canal and the Mohawk run parallel to each other here. So we're still at the place where they're two, two distinct entities that will change later on. Um, let's see, Utica, home of the Utica Comets, America Hockey League team, a sometime rival to my hometown Rochester Americans during the minor league hockey. Uh, other than that, I don't know. A whole heck of a lot, heck of a lot about Utica. I was just on Genesee Street, which I think this is about as far east as you're going to get a reference to the name Genesee. Of course, the Genesee is the Genesee River and a variety of other things relating to uh, uh, the original inhabitants of the area, the Native Americans, the Iroquois, and others before them, probably. Uh, but yeah, Genesee is not a name you see much further east of here, and I think in some ways. That's the transition from uh, pure, like you, you, there is no more, other than the, than the Bill's uh, flags that you'll still see, uh, a lot less Western New York refer uh, uh, references, references uh, in this part of the state. We're firmly in central New York. And now we're gonna be making the transition, more so tomorrow, of course, to the capital region when we get closer to Albany. Let's see here. I am going to be crossing another bridge. It feels like that's all I've been doing the last little bit here. Signage again, so good. Uh, when you're on the main stem uh, Erie Canal Trail and Empire State Trail, boy, the signage has been tremendously upgraded. I think there's only been one or two spots where I've been confused, and this has been just fantastic. So we're going over the canal. And making a right back on the trail. I'm going to have to bang out some miles uh, here, mainly because I am racing, I'm sort of racing the sun. I think I've got plenty of time, but taking that extended lunch break, while good for my energy, great for getting into dry clothes, that could mean for a bit of a race at the end, especially if I end up slowing down in that last 10 miles, which is kind of my game. <laughs> uh, so we'll see. I also noticed on the, on the map, oops, which I forgot, I have not, uh, I have not told it that I am traveling again, which usually means I get a wacky fast forward. No, no, that worked out all right. Um, yeah, so I'm also getting, now of course that I have changed into dry clothes, I'm, get, I'm still getting some pings through some drizzle, and there's certainly some cloud cut. There's, some cloud cover that would indicate that I could get it, but uh, the sun is definitely out. I would really love it if I didn't get caught in another rain event of note, because uh, although I have more clothes to change into, if need be, 
Ah, uh, it would be neat if I, the, the, any moisture I have on me when I get into camp was from my own body rather than getting drenched again. Uh, yeah, that, that was, that's, uh, two days where I've been pretty, pretty wet and I'm grateful that it looks like once this last little bit of weather uh, today goes by that uh, I have drawn a, a straight flush when it comes to weather because it looks like it's going to be cooler later in the week. Uh, it's also going to be drier. The only chance of rain looks like it's going to be the night that I'm going to be in a hotel down the line, which I think I've mentioned. So yeah, weather's really impacted this middle part of the adventure here. And uh, it's always a drag when that's the primary thing to talk about. But, you know, in bike touring, that's, that's how she goes sometimes. I know that it was a major feature of uh, my Katy Trail ride. There, was, there were some big thunderstorms. But, you know, it's funny how you later, in later times, go, eh, whatever. Yes, it rained on me that day. No big deal, you know. Uh, I think that is part of what makes Type 2 fun type two. So, sandwiched between a beautiful swampy area and the uh, Erie slash Barge Canal, I think I will let you all uh, go on your merry way and I will check in with you later on as we get closer to camp in Fort Plain. From someplace, uh, not sure where, but I am off my route. I am following the Empire State Trail instead. My route seemed a little weird uh, in the moment. And it also happened to be right when I ran into a couple who were going in the opposite direction. They started in New York City and they were going to Buffalo. And uh, the fun part is that this may, may very well be about the midway point, give or take, uh, which is kind of fun as we pass each other by. Uh, they had great things to say about the Hudson Valley little hilly, which I think I was expecting, um, but not, not too horrible. Uh, that, of course, will be the thing. They also got caught in the rain and were also a little damp. I told them I was on my second pair of clothing today, hoping not to get caught in the rain. And just on cue, we're getting on some sprinkles, so hopefully they will remain that way, but the cloud over here suggests otherwise. Ah, it just is what it is. Um, so I am going to be getting the bum you're off route in my ears for probably at least a solid 20, 20 minutes, half hour, based on what I'm seeing here. But this is a pretty low-traveled, fast road. It appears that this is, let's see, I had it, New York Route 55 is what I'm on. So, there we go. Uh, just going to keep rolling and trying to make as much miles as I can here. Uh, still feel like I'm on, very, very much on um, schedule to make it to where I need to be before sunset, where I can once again get into drier clothes, once again, <laughs> get into a dry tent and then just call it a day at a very nice campsite. I, I, I The only regret I have is that I won't have any good hammock time there like I did last time. I did bring my hammock for kind of recreation purposes, but also sort of as a backup in case uh, for the wild camping scenarios, there is no flat ground. Um, and if I need it in a pinch, I can do that and jury rig something up with tarps or whatever as necessary. It does look like it'll be dry for those two nights, uh, but potentially cold. Well cold for me at least. Uh, I think colder than what it's been looking like lows in the 40s those nights. But I should be fine. I got plenty of gear for that. All right. Yes, the drizzle is drizzling, but I am wearing my quick dry pants this time. So hopefully whatever I get is less than what we had before. And uh, they should handle that with a plum. All right. More to come. From the Ilian Marina, Ilian, Ilian, we are now in a part of New York State where my pronunciation guide is 
uh, not recommended. Could be anything. I am, I am uh, depowered here. But uh, yes, uh, I got rained on again, again. Uh, I am wet again, but that's all right. That's fine. Um, nice little spot here. It looks like it's a little setup for RVs. There's power and whatnot. I can't tell if they would accept tents here. They do, it's a marina, so they accept boats. So you might be able to tent up uh, if you wanted to. If, if I were in a more desperate place right now, I would, you know, this, this could be a consideration for camping, but uh, plenty of sunlight to go. It's actually really nice. They got washer dryers and everything. The trail spits right out here. Yeah, it'd be interesting to check in. Uh, yeah, there's places to lock up your bike. There's bike parking, so I wouldn't be surprised if they accept bikes. That's an interesting option for those of you if you want to. Presumably it would be paid because it looks private. So, uh, But I have 25 miles to go on the button. And the pathway and the road that was part of this, this was all new to me. Holy smokes, it was fast. I was really making some excellent time on it. The trail continues to be paved here. I don't know if that's going to continue, but very fast. Uh, there, it has been, uh, it has not been purely flat for better and for worse. So uh, that's, you know, slow and then fast and then slow and then fast, which is fine. I'm going slow now because I'm going up a short grade. But the uh, infrastructure, the, the trail infrastructure is excellent in this part of the state. Big, big change from the last time I did it. So yeah, uh, I guess the answer here is that following, following the Empire State Trail signs sometimes can dump you into very muddy parts. And then sometimes getting out of your otherwise non-Empire State Trail directions and following the Empire State Trail like I just did, uh, you will be rewarded for it. So. Uh, one of these days we'll get a good guide for this uh, that I haven't found yet. It'd be nice if they had a better one or even better GPX uh, routes that you can dump into ride with GPS and have your turn by turns. That would be pretty cool too. Uh, hello, New York State, if you are listening. And maybe you already have it and I'm just a terrible researcher. Okay, uh, as you can tell, headwind because of course, I really have been predominantly get, catching headwinds on this trip, which is a drag, but so be it. All right. I, by the way, I am on a separated uh, paved pathway, but we are uh, going along a very, as you can hear, major highway. And we are, uh, I'm catching some road spray from all the rain. So that is what it is from lock 18 in Jacksonburg, New York. Sure, Jacksonburg. Everybody knows Jacksonburg. Doesn't it feel like sometimes that there are, it's like, enter name of person here, put townburg or ton or ville at the end of it? I don't know. Uh, deep thoughts. I'm about 18 and change miles away from lock 15, which will be my campground for the night. Lock 18 you can camp at, uh, based on what I see. Um, when you see picnic tables, uh, uh, what do you call them, barbecues, and a sign that says no open fires, yeah, seems, and, and a big, big uh, empty grass, seems pretty good. Seems like a thing. These locks are really fascinating. Um, I wish I had more time to just kind of sit and watch it a little bit. Um, some old technology, some new technology. Barges are still going through. I'm seeing one right now. So <laughs> it is still commercially used, apparently. Although its commercial efficacy is much lower than it has been in years past. But yeah, I mean, I see dudes on boats with ropes moving things. So yeah, seems, 
seems like a thing. Um, this trail is paved. It is smooth in most parts of it. I mean, I'm averaging between 12 and 15 miles per hour on it, which is crazy for me, uh, fully loaded with a headwind. Yeah, it's pretty great. Uh, it has gone full, fully gray, not unlike my hair. Um, not really, I'm not fully gray, but uh, the sky is fully gray. And the rain seems to have finally blessedly stopped. I feel like every time I say that though, I run the risk of getting rained on again. Um, I won't be changing any clothes between now and camp because, you know, frankly, I'm running out. <laughs> uh, I do have plenty. Tomorrow night, I will end up at another hotel just because camping in and around the capital district was kind of eh, and I didn't want to do three wild camps in a row. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the Cassie and Andor Star Wars show drops at 3 a.m. tomorrow morning, I think. Um, definitely tomorrow. And I would love to watch that in a nice space, maybe on a screen bigger than my phone. But I'll do that if I have to. Um, how deranged am I? I actually brought a Chromecast with me, just in case. Just in case I can Chromecast Disney Plus to my hotel TV. That's how deranged I am. I checked last night. That, that hotel had a TV with a HDMI port I could have used. So maybe the one in Troy, New York will as well. We shall see. I will be stunned if the hotel in Troy is nearly as accommodating as uh, the La Quinta in Verona was. I mean, the fact that they were like, yeah, bring your bike upstairs. Sure, elevators on your left. Uh, it was just stunning because most of the time people are like, ew, bike, uh, when it comes to that, yet have no options for me to secure it. So in Troy, Troy's a little more of a city, more of a city setting. So I am uh, thinking there's little chance that they'll uh, have bike parking that would be secure. So I'm going to probably see, well, first of all, if they'll let me bring it to the room, amazing. But uh, if tomorrow uh, they say no to everything else, I'll be like, okay, can you put this in your baggage room? Because that's the only option left. That's usually what ends up happening. Um, so we'll see. Probably should have called ahead on that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's just occurring to me, you know, I do all this other planning. I hate calling though. I don't know. All right, well, in any event, we are, I'll give you a real time update while trying not to fall off the trail here. 18.1 miles until camp. And now that I'm geared in, we're going a nice solid 12 miles per hour. So yeah, we're this is making great time. The late start is being ameliorated. The rain is being ameliorated by the fact that this surface is absolutely <laughs> stunningly great. Um, Empire State Trail indeed. Holy moly. Uh, I, I, if, you, if you love yourself a paved trail, boy, a whole chunk of this section is just beautiful, smooth paved asphalt and uh, moves real fast. On the other side of Little Falls, New York, cute little town, beautiful, um, picturesque kind of village, but it was drizzling, so I couldn't get a really good shot. But there are some beautiful stone features that I remembered vividly from the last trip. Um, I am, for the first time, back on a uh, uh, non-paved surface, and. It has certainly slowed me down a bit, but um, not, not so much more than the terrain is. I'm actually kind of going up a bit. There's a slight grade going up. So what that means is I may not get there by 6, uh, but certainly by 6.30 is how I'm feeling. 
at this point. And I believe that this section of the towpath, or it's hard to call this a towpath at this point. We're well away from the canal at this point. Oh, no, I take that back. I would not call this a towpath, but I see the canal through the trees. So definitely still part of the canalway trail, but was not there was never a towpath because we are not on the original canal. Uh, very few people on the trail today, and I'm about to run into another person. So not much more to say, so more to come. From Lock 16 in Mindenville, New York, we are getting close. We are, let's see, let's do a little mile check here. We're 6.6 .6 miles away. I was briefly tempted to camp here instead just to try another one out but decided against it for one very big reason tomorrow is a slightly longer day only by a handful of miles but you know add on six more miles and suddenly it's much more like the 70 mile day uh, that i did yesterday so i will uh, go through and complete this to fort plain and probably be happier for it all along. Whew. I am a little, a little beat. I just texted Kimberly said, I am wet and I am tired. <laughs> and that is both very true. But uh, I'm also very happy because, hey man, five, five cycling days, I have uh, been, I'm on schedule um, as planned, which is pretty great, especially considering the weather of the last two days, not just the one, but both of them, and the um, uh, the mileage yesterday in particular. So pretty, pretty good, pretty good. All right, more to come from Fort Plain in a few minutes. Well, for me, for you, it'll be like two seconds. From Fort Plain, New York. It is the end of the fifth day of riding, and I'm at a beautiful campsite, just as I remembered, with a just stunning couple of maples, uh, old, old maples, just glorious, glorious trees. Um, and there is somebody here who actually passed me um, quite, quite fast uh, earlier. You'll notice I'm setting up my tent if you're hearing. Um, so uh, he is um, in his tent and maybe done for the night. Um, I may or may not see him in the morning depending on, because he did not really acknowledge my hello. So I will honor that. Um, but I am very grateful to be here. Like I said, I was wet, well I'm still wet and tired. Um, I am also very grateful that I uh, had the foresight to get dinner in Utica just because that Fort Plain is uh, like another, uh, is, is it a mile? It may, be, it may be less than a mile down, but it's, it's further down. There's a peacock. I am not kidding you. There is literally a peacock in the street. Hmm. I'm going to have to take a picture of this, otherwise you all won't believe me. And it's heading my way. Well, that's fascinating. Forgive me while we do this real-time picture because you should see this. Hey, look, peacock. What a beautiful bird. Um, that's strange. I don't know if the bird will... <laughs> uh... I don't know anything about peacocks. Are they aggressive? This is the, this is the strangest thing I think I've ever encountered in a tour. Huh. Well, he's, he's eating grass. And I say he because I believe that the, it, it, because it's multicolored, I believe the males, this is what I know about peacocks. Okay, all right. I'm gonna keep uh, setting up my tent and Maybe this peacock, this peacock is just like roaming into camp here. I don't know whom it belongs to. Came from a, oh, I don't know how to describe it. There's a lot of uh, pallets across the way. 
maybe maybe there okay well that was a moment um <laughs> i'm glad you were all here for this um so uh end of the day um glad i got had dinner don't have to go to town um have plenty of water but there is a sign that says that there's potable water over at the lock house which if memory serves at the hose but <laughs> that that would be fine i have plenty for tonight um i will fill up tomorrow though um just because getting water on this trail, I, I cannot emphasize enough how um, smart it was that I brought the uh, tank with me. I think that I'm going to have to get rid of this. Um, uh, I mean, it has some utility. Maybe I'll hold on to it till, for, for other purposes, like in-camp purposes. But um, I think from now on, I'm going to use a water bladder that seals up better because hanging it from the rear, as you'll see in many of the pictures, is just not great and it's wide open at the top. Uh, I just can't seal it anymore. The zip, uh, it's, it's sort of like a Ziploc bag, except the Ziploc does not work and hasn't for a while. So in any event, um, I, I'm so grateful to uh, be able to get out of these wet clothes, you know, the second set of them, and uh, get into some dry clothes, get in this tent and man, just enjoy my uh, dinner and maybe listen to some more podcasts. I don't know. Oh, it's Pallets R Us LLC. That is the business across the street from which the uh, peacock came from. I, oh wait, I think he may be the guy in the truck with Pallets R Us LLC. I wonder if he's coming to collect the peacock. No. This is the strangest thing I've ever... Let's just put it this way. This is a great way to end a, day, a, a tour journal entry. The mystery of the peacock. This peacock was not here last time. It seems to have no owner. Unless it's this guy in the truck. I, I don't know. But this is fascinating. Um, if there is a resolution to the peacock story, you're going to have to wait until next week. Because uh, we're just going to have to end it right now. Oh, wait. No. Yes. You'll have to wait till next week. I think we have a resolution. I cannot do that to you. Uh, the guy in the pallet truck. He 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 came and got the and got the bird, and he's feeding them a little bit too. I don't know. I don't know what. Looks like something. Anyways, um, crisis averted. Was there a crisis? I don't know. Peacock. Day five. I have nothing else to say. Statistics. Miles biked 63.5. Maximum grade 5.4%. I don't know. Is that good or bad? I have no idea. Maximum speed. This is good. 24.9 miles per hour. That was down the big hill. Calories burned 2,467. How do they know this? Calories consumed uh, like 4,000. It was a lot. It was a lot. Loose exotic bird encounters. One. <laughs> it was so weird. Flats, zero. And as always, we like to close out the show with a special shout out to the Pedal Shift Society. Because of support from listeners like you, Pedal Shift is a weekly bicycle touring podcast with a global community. Expanding into live shows and covering new tours, if you like what you hear, you can support the show for five bucks, two bucks, or even a buck a month. And there's one shot and annual options. If you're not into the small monthly thing, check it all out at pedalshift.net slash society. On to the society. Kimberly Wilson, Caleb Jenkinson, Cameron Lean, Andrew McGregor, Michael Hart, Keith Nagel, Brock Dittus, Thomas Skadow, Marco Lowe, Terrence Manson, Harry Telgatis, Chris Barron, Mark Van Ram, Brad Hipwell, Mr. T, Nathan Poulton, Stephen Dickerson, Vince LaGreco, Cody Florchinger, Tom Medinati, Craig Braithwaite, Sandy Pizio, Jeff Muster, Seth Pollock, Joseph Quinn, Drew Porter, Byron Patterson, Joaquin Robert, Ray Jackson, Jeff Fry, Kenny Mikey, Lisa Hart, John Denkler, Steve Henkel, Miguel Quinones, Alejandro Aviles Reyes, Keith Spangler, Greg Towner, Jody Zoranen, Lucas Barwick, Michael Baker, Brian Bechtal, Reinhardt Bigel, Greg Middlemas, Connie Moore, William Gothman, Brian Benton, Joan Churchill, Mike Bender, Rick Weinberg, Billy Crafton, Gary Matushak, Greg Latois Lopez, James Sloan, Jonathan Dillard, John Funk, Ronald Paroli, Dave Roll, Brian Hafner, Misha LeBlanc, 
Ari Messenger, David Krotke, Todd Grosbeck, Wally Estrella, Sue Reiners, John Lico, Stephen Granada, Philip Mueller, Robert Lackey, Dominic Carroll, Jackie McCullough, John Hickman, Carl Presso, David Neves, Patty Louise, Terry Fitzgerald, Peter Steinmetz, Timothy Fitzpatrick, Michael Lazuski, Hank O'Donnell, David Zanoni, David Weil, Matthew Sponsor, Chad Reno, Spartan Dale, Carolyn Ferguson, Peggy Littlefield, Lauren Allen Smith, Eric Burns, Thomas Pearl, Darren McKibben, Richard Stewart, Dave Fletcher, Jack Smith, Luke Parkinson, Ryan Patterson, Sarus Faravar, John Gardner, and Sam Scruggs. And thanks also to all past and anonymous folks for helping make this show happen. Thank you for joining. You can find Pedal Shift at pedalshift.net for more great bicycle touring content. You can hear the Pedal Shift Project through Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app. Opening music courtesy of Jason Kent off his self-titled album. The track is called America. Check out his band Sunfield's latest release, Mono Mono, wherever cool music is available.